meconium laser cystolithopaxy and a nucleation of the prostate for benign prostatic hyperplasia. We begin our patient assessment with a complete medical history, including an international prostate symptom score. We perform a physical examination, specifically a digital rectal exam. We obtain a urinalysis and a PSA on all of our patients. We estimate the prostate size and shape via a transrectal ultrasound, although we have abdominal ultrasound or cross-sectional imaging such as MRI or CT are also acceptable. Optionally, some patients may warrant postvoid residual, urophilometry, or cystoscopy depending on their claim. For our equipment, we utilize a 26 French continuous flow resectoscope with a laser bridge. We use a 7.1 French tapered open-ended laser ureteral catheter to stabilize our laser fiber. We use a silicone membrane adapter. A single-use 550 micron end-firing homium YAG laser fiber with Moses technology is used for the case. For morcellation, we use an offset rigid nephroscope and a soft tissue morcellator from Richard Wolf. For laser settings, we utilize 2 joules and 25 hertz for cystolithopaxy and 2 joules and 30 to 50 hertz for prostate nucleation. This is with the Moses setting activated. We perform cystolithopaxy prior to prostate nucleation. In this sped up segment, the homium laser set at 2 joules and 25 hertz is used to dust the bladder stone. Smaller stones are stabilized against the bladder wall and are fragmented using brief laser bursts. We then turn our attention to prostate nucleation. We perform initial anterior incisions made at 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock at the level of the bladder neck extending distally to the level of the barrel montana. We're careful to ensure the protection of the external urethral sphincter. With the help of some blunt dissection, this incision is carried down to the prostatic capsule. Following this, we perform left lateral lobe and nucleation using a top-down approach. The laser fiber is employed intermittently to further develop the dissection plane as well as to help with anal spacing. We have gone around the left lateral lobe and are bluntly dissecting the posterior plane. For bleeders, we defocus the laser fiber and coagulate the bladder. We continue on with nucleating the left lateral lobe and develop the posterior plane until we reach the bladder. Prior to releasing the adenoma, we perform a 5 o'clock incision from the bladder neck to the level of the Vero Montana. This releases any remaining mucosal attachments that the left lateral lobe may have. The left lateral lobe is further enucleated with the end of the endoscope in a retrograde fashion in a posterior plane towards the bladder. While enucleating the left lateral lobe, it is important to incise the remaining distal mucosal bridge between 1 and 5 o'clock. The left lateral lobe is then further nucleated in a retrograde fashion and then released from the bladder neck into the bladder. Hemostasis of the bed of the left lateral lobe is achieved with a defocused laser fiber. Following this, we turn our attention to the median and right lateral lobe where we perform an apical release distally. 
This allows us to further enucleate the posterior plane of the median lobe of the right lateral Additional anterior plane enucleation of the right lateral lobe and median lobe is performed. We extend our 11 o'clock incision, employing a top-down approach. A combination of blunt dissection and laser enucleation is utilized. Here, we develop the posterior plane of the right lateral and median lobe. We work in tandem to join the posterior plane with the anterior plane that we previously drew. It is important to ensure that the mucosal bridge between the 11 o'clock and 7 o'clock position is fully incised. Following this, in a retrograde fashion, we release the right lateral lobe and median lobe into the bladder. Hemostasis of the right lateral lobe and median lobe bed is again achieved with a defocused laser fiber. The laser resectoscope is then exchanged for an offset rigid nephroscope. A soft tissue morselator, we use the piranha nucleation system by Richard Wolf, is placed through the straight working channel of the nephroscope for adenoma morselation. It is critical a full bladder is maintained through the exchange of rigid scopes and entire morselation process, as decompression can lead to hemorrhage, decreased visualization, and bladder injury. Accordingly, we use a secondary irrigation channel. Postoperatively, we insert a 24 French three way Foley catheter. We initiate continuous bladder irrigation with a trial of void the next day. On discharge, we utilize acetaminophen and ibuprofen for pain control, and we see our patient in four to six weeks for pathology 